why well-groomed eyebrows are good, especially if you're running for president. Have I got a bit more news for you is in 40 minutes here on BBC One Wales. I would like to see him get another break and get a good number one if he could, or even if he could got in the charts again. You know, you mentioned the name Ricky Valance, and some people say, he's dead. And I say, no, that's Richie Valance. That was a different guy altogether. You saw a sign for a stock car race. Even at his tender age, <laughs> he's a ball of fire. He's always working on eight cylinders, even when he knows that four cylinders should be switched off. Tell Laura I love her. Tell Laura I need her. Tell Now they're on the programme today, music legend Ricky Valance, the first Welshman to get a number one. He'll be in. Hi, I'm Ricky Valance for the Roy Noble Show. Good afternoon, Mr Valance. Hello, just letting you know that we've got Mr Ricky Valance here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mr Valance, would it be possible for an autograph from my mother, Lily? Yes, you can. Pleasure, my pleasure. L-I-L-Y, I think it is. Oh, that's great. You'll be thrilled a bit. Well, what an inordinate pleasure. Come around here. Yeah. Ricky, you're very welcome. It's a great pleasure to be here. Yeah, sit down. Oh, it's my pleasure. There's so much I remember this when it was fresh from There's the so oven. much more to me than just this record, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Delighted to say Ricky Valance is here. Welcome home. Thank you very much, Roy. Yeah. We've had a series uh, relatively recently called Welsh Greats, you see, and they concentrate uh, on a, uh, you know, a particular person who's flown the flag for Wales internationally and is well And the known. first, I understand, yeah. I'm the first Welshman to make number one. You are. I introduced you as such at the beginning. Absolutely right. How did you come to sing it then? My manager at the time called Lena Davis, and she got me a recording test yeah. with Columbia. Laura and Tommy were lovers. He wanted to give her uh, when I was played that song originally, my first thought was how the hell I could sing it any better than that. It's got such a great hook, as we say in the business, but uh, my what we call routine said, look, you used to be a choir boy. So it's a hymn. So I thought about it and I thought, well, tell Laura I love her. He said, that's the sound we want. That's the sound. And so that was a sound, in fact, that I, I, I used in all my records. So I got virtually trapped uh, into um, the kind of music which, although I liked, was not really me. And then, of course, you do have that uh, certain uh, reservations about what do I do now? from uh, Abertillery, South Wales. Laura has, has been a fantastic record, really. I mean, he can't get on the stage unless he sings it, obviously. I, I don't know how many times he's sung it. Can't keep up with it. I did know that the song was going to cause an awful lot of interest and that it, something would happen with it. Well, BBC never played it. I mean, quite frankly, they, they were so, oh, we can't play this dirt, you know, about death and all that kind of thing. You know, we can't have this. And you had your kind of Mary Whitehouses of the day 
who said, well, this is going to encourage these young men to go out and kill themselves over their girlfriends. And we're going, oh, my God. What do you think about this record, Laura, I Love You? I dig it, man. <laughs> what does that mean to a square like me? I enjoy it. The lyrics aren't bad, and uh, it's what the teenagers go for. How can you say the lyrics aren't bad when it's about a man being burned to death in a car? Well, that's what the teenagers like. Anything sordid. The Road Safety Council thinks this is morbid and corrupt. Oh, dear. I feel sorry for the Road Safety Council. They're very stuffy. It uh, climbed the charts and knocked Apache off and was number one for three weeks and in the charts for four months. The joy, if you will, of, of being the number one. And, I mean, that was, wow, you know, I mean, you're like God to these kids out there. And I would be on stage there, you know, with, with my black slacks and my blue shirt and they're doing the old Elvis Presley bit there, you know. <laughs> uh, I remember this particular night, we had the, the girls had my legs and the bouncers had my arms and they were pulling between them. <laughs> Unbelievable. Being top of the pile is, is the greatest thing. Like, nobody can ever take that away from you. It doesn't matter whether you, you don't do it again or whatever, you've been there, you know what it's like. I think people see Ricky as the eldest statesman of entertainment here. We are working with Ricky on a, a mini tour of three shows in the area, in the Costa Blanca. And of course, this is one of those shows tonight. The audience is a cross-section, really, of the mature kids, as I would call them, and they will all know, tell Laura I love her. So I think that is probably the biggest recognition because here, 51 years into his time in music, um, he is still recognized as one of the greats of that time. To my mind, she's my kind of girl. Well, you asked to see my discs and my awards. You've got the silver, which was presented actually in 1960 for a quarter of a million for Tell Laura I Love Her. Uh, the gold uh, at that time, of course, was a million, and they've included now the platinum. So, in fact, we've got the, the full set there, <laughs> which is rather nice. And uh, the two awards, I was appearing at a, quite a big festival uh, in uh, Bognor region, funny enough. And uh, I was presented with the top male vocalist and an award for the uh, nomination of the audience as the top solo act. TKO Gold on the Costa Blanca. Yet another beautiful sunny autumn day. You can't roll skate in the buffalo herd. You can't roll skate in the buffalo herd. You can be happy if you were mine too. We're uh, off now to uh, see my uh, record producer. Uh, his name is Snoopy, the genius in the studio. Uh, he's not at all pushy. Um, we just work together in harmony. The question, you know, that goes through my mind many times is, you know, how long do you go on? Hopefully we'll have a few more years to go. There isn't anything else I can say except my voice is, well, it's my life. Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though Lucky, I've just had my headphones on. In the sky, you get by. If you smile through your tears and sorrow. Sorry. Smile. Sorry, I'm hearing too much popping on the microphone. Could you hear it? Do you want me to put the pop shield in?
Put the guard on again. I knew nothing about Ricky until he approached me and then I got my Guinness Book of Hit Records out and went through and uh, there was a picture of Ricky Valance in the Hall of Fame with his hit single, Tell Laura I Love Her. We'll give it another shot. Okay. From the top, second take. Mm -hmm. Ricky's a perfectionist and his own worst enemy, really. He can have a perfect take and he'll pull it apart deliberately just to find a minute fault, like he took a breath when he shouldn't have done. Smile, though your heart is yeah, there's a little, there's something I'm not happy with. Smile. Unfortunately, being in the game of recording, Ricky, uh, I do get the ridicule. It's a horrible word to use, but I get the ridicule of people who basically label him with uh, the one-hit wonder. They label him with um, generally just wishy-washy music. The term one-hit wonder to me means an entirely different thing to other people. Other people use it as a derogatory. So these idiots, and they are idiots, who use that term, and when they use it for somebody like myself, who spent 52 years in the business, I had hits all over the world, how in the hell can they say I'm a one-hit wonder? Only one reason, because they know nothing about me. These people don't realize that he's totally committed to what he does. He believes in what he does. And because he believes in what he does, I believe in what he does. That'll work, that'll work. It can be difficult, it can be very difficult. But I found the other side of Ricky, which is a very loving, very warm and tender person. I learned to love him, and I do. I, I dearly love him. He's, he's, he's a character and a half. Say it's me that you adore. Oh, my darling, tell me when. Well, I had a great chance to work with some of the greats in those days on the rock and roll tours. And for me, this was one of the greatest. Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps. Yeah. What a showman. And also, Jerry Lee Lewis. And Ricky Valance and the Valentines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is one of your favorites, love. Yeah, it is. It's, I mean, I love Seems the song like very much. Her, and I don't know if we got it now. Where's I guess the frustrating people? thing about this, the moving away, was the fact that it really was a good record, some of my best work. Uh, it didn't make it in the UK. I think it deserved to get into the top 20. Yeah, Which on ref the record? Yeah, that's right. On reflection, it was basically because we were looking for something of the ilk of Tell Laura, which was a strong, which we could never find. Right. Oh, love. I mean, it was disappointing, obviously. <laughs> At least he was still working, and that's the main thing. I mean, he was still well known, but you've just got to get on with your life. You can't do nothing else. Absolutely Here we wonderful. are with Lena. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my first award. Lena was a, she was a very, very good manager. She didn't suffer fools gladly, so she's very dominating. And uh, which is good for me in the business, you know, except occasionally we did clash because uh, that's one thing I won't have. I won't be dominated by anyone and especially a woman. <laughs> <laughs> there we are, two lovebirds together about to tie the knot. Yes. There we go. Well, we had tied the knot there. Oh, that was after. That, that, uh, was, that, that was after. That was after, definitely. Well, 1956, yes, that was a long, long, long time. Long, long time. Oh, there's a man. He's always late. Hello, hello. It's 11 o'clock crack you're talking about. <laughs> I never know you'd be on bloody time yet. <laughs> I first met Ricky about six years ago. 
Uh, I used to run a radio station and he was one of our guests and we've been good friends ever since. This is you live on stage. No, See here you look now. 60, 15, 20 years younger. <laughs> what does that mean? No, 10 I'm years younger. Does that mean every years. other one? Uh, I look older. A bit of passion. <laughs> and in public as well. There you go. Oh, there oh, we go. That's the end. No, no, that is, that's a cracker. That, yeah. Out. <laughs> Yeah. Ricky was the first Welshman to have a number one hit record and he's very proud of that fact. And what he would like to do is to give something back to Wales and also to have some of his fellow countrymen and countrywomen pay him some attention. Last year, whenever it was the 50th anniversary, we, we investigated trying to get you at a major venue in Wales. Right. So this year, we want to try and start smaller and grow up. Raise your profile. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the first venue that comes to mind for me is down at uh, Newbridge, which is in Gwent in South Wales. And uh, I know the guy that actually is in charge of the committee that, that runs it. It's the Memorial Hall. Uh, has this been here a long time? Oh, I met my wife there. Which is another good reason for doing <laughs> show this, this year, you know. It's always good for the press. Yeah, they like absolutely. have the angle. Well. That'll be our next step. Well, the Costa Blanca is really a, a lovely place to live, but we're not blinded by sun, sea, and sand. Like a lot of people, that's all they can see. Look at that, that scene across there as well. Look at that. Look at Over here, um, I don't think we've ever felt that we fitted in. You know, it, it's been a home, but not the home. Bring you your drinks. Thank you. First of all, we were only going to stay for a year, and then <laughs> landed up we are staying for nine years so far. So we'll see how much more it goes. Well, realistically, of course, I mean, going back to Wales uh, wouldn't further my career to the extent that I would want it. I profile, but one of the things I would love to do is a concert, preferably somewhere like St David's in Cardiff. Uh, if somebody's out there is uh, interested, then that's fabulous. We hope maybe this will be a stepping stone towards that. All of my life since I have been born, you've been my love and you live next door. Then came the news. Wow, it's a long time since I've been down here. Not these cars weren't here the last time I came down, that's for sure. Just turn this down a second. This is my birthplace. My given name was uh, David Spencer, and I was christened in a little church on the hill, in fact, where I was uh, a choir boy. You're going to get kids, especially there, that when you, we were being brought up, uh, they're going to say, well, you know, you want to be a singer, you know, Mamby Pamby. I want to be a fireman. Um, I want to go down the mines. But I always knew from a very early age that that's the only thing that I would really enjoy doing with the whole of my life. Hey. How oh, lovely to see you, Luke. Oh, lovely to see you. This is the first time we've ever met. Yes, of course. I'm standing outside there, sitting in the car, thinking, I wonder what it's like inside my old house. Oh, well, <laughs> well look, I mean, what, look what you've done with it. Yeah. Well, one of the things I noticed when I came in here is I don't know exactly where I am because it's all changed now. <laughs> I mean, I noticed, for instance, I was going to say that was the scullery, but of course no, it isn't. No, no, that's not the, it's the this extension. Is the this was the kitchen oh, now. Oh, right. It was the old uh, grate, yeah. the coal fire, and Mum used to cook in the oven at the side of That's the... That's right, uh, yeah, black light green. God, God, yeah. I mean, it brings back so many memories. It mm. really, really does. Yeah. All your family up here as well, I see. Yeah, that's the nephew that's been on the internet to see what you look like. Oh! Because <laughs> he was only young and he's, yeah, seven. Right. he's 16 now, isn't he? So they were all curious as to uh, the youngsters, uh, to yeah. who I was, who really. you were, yeah. yeah. And what you look like. What I look like. <laughs> How do I look? You look younger now, my like dear. Right. I, <laughs> I love it. Believe I love this woman, folks. <laughs> I love this woman. Can't imagine how years ago how they all slept in these bedrooms, yeah. because they're so small. Five of us in a bed, for, for freezing cold. Yeah. 
and uh, the old man coming up and uh, bringing this uh, shelf from the oven, oh, yeah. which was covered in the cloth and put it in, we had to warm Between, it up yeah. and we'd all huddle together <laughs> with maybe an overcoat or so on the top That's as well. Right, yeah. So how many brothers did you say you had to sleep in this well, one Well, five of us yeah. and uh, inevitably um, I would get blamed for tormenting the others yeah. and so I'd give them a slap and suddenly my father would come up the stairs and give me a slap. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? David Spencer, yeah, well, I was an ordinary little boy. Uh, I learned to, to, to fight very early. I had to. So it was, it was a rough, tough, black and white kind of life. I loved my parents very much, especially my mother. I was extremely close to my mother, who was a wonderful singer. Well, my father was a miner. He was a great man. But you didn't mess around with my father, you know. He, he was, you know, come on, boy, what are you so... You know, you know, I can't say, Dad, I love you, Dad, you know, which my son can say to me. And so the frustration uh, of wanting to do that, I think, can have an effect. Um, he was a man who had a very, very hair-trigger temper. Uh, later on in my life, I can remember my father saying to me, you know, David, we, we punished you for a lot, and it wasn't, we found out it wasn't your fault. And I said, Dad, you know, a bit late because it has an impression on me. It made me into a rebel. Welcome to my world. Hey! All right, all right, good to see you, good to see you. You used to have a nickname, and I can't think what it was. Curly. Curly. Curly Roberts. Curly Roberts. Yeah. But I had black hair then. You had black and hair. And you did. I did as well. <laughs> Absolutely right. And uh, I tell you what I can remember. The old uh, choir pews there. You but they're still hard. They're still hard. Yes, they're still yes. cold. The only thing that's missing is Nobby's not here anymore. Oh, Mr Woodford. <laughs> Mr Woodford. <laughs> and I used to sit on the corner there, in the back, creep in through the door. I can see him sitting there now, lowering his spectacles and glaring at me over there. Saying, he glared at everyone. Late, late again, Spencer. <laughs> you know what you're saying, right? Yeah. Oh, the, for me, that, they're wonderful yeah. memories. Well, my father's ashes are scattered at the back of the church and were done so by my brothers. I mean, on that particular time, I think we were abroad or something. There was some way I'd, I couldn't get back, um, which is very disappointing for me, obviously, um, to say goodbye to my father. But his ashes are there, and I always feel, without sounding morbid, I would be most happy to have my ashes uh, scattered with my father's. I went to work, uh, of course, in the colliery with him, and uh, he, he was the one that um, was responsible for saying to me one day, you know, David, if you're going to make singing a career, you've got to get out of this because this is not for you. And so I did that. I just got out. The old hometown looks the same As I step down from the train And there to meet me I grew up with Ricky Valance, David Spencer then, as you know, because we lived in the same street in Anesty. He would sort of do his own thing when he was younger, like, you know. He seemed to be a lot more caring than, uh, than he used to be, I think, you know. In fact, I think, personality-wise, I think he, his life has improved him a lot. It has improved him. You know, there was dance hall in every village, more or less. We went all, all over the valleys, you know, dancing, Stradiga, everywhere. Then Tuesday, we be over the memo in Newbridge. There's quite a few of us still like the modern dancing, you know, because I'm pretty fit now and I can still jive, you know. It used to be called Grab a Granny Night, but we've cleaned it up. <laughs> uh, so, of course, every Tuesday you have uh, these maybe 50 to 75, 80 people turn up as regularly as clockwork. Um, they dance the night away. I started dancing here, and it used to be packed 
the girls one side, the boys the other side, and you just go along and may I have this dance. We were very courteous in those days. Uh, and that's how many of us met. Oh, little boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, boy. Oh, yeah. We met here in the memo. Um, I was in the Air Force at the time. Um, it was just an ordinary dance night. They used to jive up here, uh, I don't know, once or twice a week. And, and uh, she was dancing in the corner with a couple of her friends. And I just kind of looked at her, and uh, she had one of these very tight bebop skirts on, you know? Those were the days. I Those thought, hmm, I rather like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was, in fact, courting somebody else at the time, but he was in the army. <laughs> so, um... The Air Force won. On the Air Force One, exactly, that's right. Ricky uh, has long wished for some sort of personal recognition in Wales in particular. And if we can do anything at all to help him achieve his, his one aim, why shouldn't we? As we can as well. And another thing has just crossed my mind, a band. Uh, yeah, yeah well, I can, I can speak to John Smallman about that, and uh, you know, he did play for you once before, just him and his son, keyboards and drums. Oh, yeah, and, I remember and they were brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that's good. That's yeah. good. Now we need to talk about publicity as well. You want me to get some publicity down to you? We've we've got our own website. We've got uh, the council will put things on their website for us. Would be nice to get something in the local paper as well. Yes, I can get in know. touch with the South Wales Argus. You need to and, do that. And, and even we can get in touch with the BBC. Let me know about the band. No, we'll shake on this, but don't hold me to it. No, <laughs> don't hold me to it. He says. Sound like my agent. <laughs> right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on the 24th of February, Ricky Valens will be doing a concert here. I'm sure that you know uh, Ricky of old. He is uh, a very well-respected uh, singer from this part. And I'm pleased to say that Ricky and his wife Evelyn are with us in the room tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, could I ask you just to put your hands together and welcome Ricky and Evelyn. Thank you. Oh, oh, it's it's Thank you very much. Well, love, it's been a lot. We waited this for a lot of years. Yeah. Shall we dance with him? I go with these on. Oh, you got your boots on. Yeah, I told you I can't. If I, I forgot about that. If I got up to bop, I'd have to take these off. I'm gonna bop, bloody bop, you must be joking. Go my back. In 1960, Ricky Valance sang a song called Tell Laura I Love Her. The record sold a quarter of a million and so won the silver disc. Today, Ricky Valance can walk along the crowded promenade at Bridlington in Yorkshire, but nobody turns their head. As one can imagine at this particular time, I made quite a lot of money from Tell Laura. But I was an idiot at the time because I felt that there was plenty more where this came from. <laughs> Unfortunately, this was my big mistake. The structure of the business, the way that it was in the 60s, uh, was such that you really did what you were told like a good little boy. And really, you know, that wasn't me. And uh, once the word got around uh, that you're hard to handle, and things start to drop. You know, it was like a square peg in a round hole. I had a lot of heartbreaks and worry until in the end, I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I have learned from my mistakes. I really have learned. And uh, I feel that given another chance, I really feel this after studying it from quite a wide angle. But if I could just get another chance again, I think I could really make it again. And I, I was born to make mistakes, a lot of mistakes, and I did. But I felt that, uh, all in all, that if people had taken a lot more trouble within the business to understand me, instead of uh, being antagonistic and uh, pushing me away, I think uh, things would have been very different. But at the end of the day, I have one thing above all else. I have my self-respect and nobody can take that away from me. And now, at my time of life, suddenly there's a resurgence of the Ricky Valance fan club out there again. And it's, uh, it's wonderful. Uh, tomorrow night, very special tomorrow concert. Night, the Memo, special, the Memorial Hall in Newbridge. The fans can expect, you know, the vintage 
you know. Uh, yeah, I'll be doing a nice Ricky mixture, Benz. you know. I'll be doing a nice mixture of, yes, of, of, of stuff there. And uh, Ricky, it's been absolute, absolute pleasure here. I understand you're going to be playing one of my very old uh, records, in, an old B-side. Well, uh, it's Charlotte next door. She's in charge of the buttons and siders, and what Charlotte uh -huh. says, you know, we all tend to jump to. And so she's she likes it, she lives it. Ricky Valance, absolute joy indeed. Thank you very much. Yeah. I haven't heard this for years. Uh, I haven't heard this for years. Never knew the thrill of a moonlight walk. <laughs> There's no in my thoughts. I want to fall in love. Singing along with it, you see. You remember it? Mm -hmm. I want to fall in. Mm -hmm. I'm not at all. Hello, sir. How are you? Mm -hmm. I'm Ricky Valens. I am indeed, yes. Oh, it's, it's good to catch up with you because uh, I've always been a fan. Ever since that record came out? Ever since you then. You've told my other ones as well? Uh, You're doing a show tomorrow night, so I hear. That's correct. Which is news New to Bridge. me. The audience is the most important thing. I've got to get on the stage and I've got to please that audience. And I've got to give them everything I can. And not only that, but 24 hours a day in some respect, I have to be Ricky Valance or David Spencer. Because That's those people made me what I am today. Last time I was there, Lonnie Donegan was there. Oh, there you go. Not long after he died. No. There you go. You look after yourself, buddy, OK? Yeah. Take care. I'll try and get there tomorrow night. Yeah, please do. That's great. I mean, that's fantastic. There's only one big problem. Is I've done, done this for about 25 years, and I'm finding that that la 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 is a bit high. Can we take it down? Is it possible? Tonight is the big night. Um, here I am in the illustrious establishment of the Memorial, Memorial Hall in Newbridge. Like we have a full house tonight, which is quite incredible. And playing to those people that have come especially to see me, then I really have to be on my toes. Am I scared? You bet your bloody life I am. <laughs> Well, the difference tonight, of course, is I'm using a live band. And, and goodness knows how long it is since I've used a live band. Once upon a time, a boy too young to know, gave his trusting heart. I mean, went into cabaret in the 70s. You know, I mean, I, I can remember going on at Bogner Regis, closing the show with American Trilogy. And the people went absolutely berserk. And I came off, it, it affected me to the extent I literally had tears running down my face. We traveled for 29 weeks, all around the camps. And we started off in Porcelli. Then we go back down to Barry Island. Then it was Mined, then Bogner. From Bogner, we go up to Skegness. And from Skegness, you went up to Putheli, and you did that every week. Bing, 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 boom, bing, bing, boom. I'm like this, you know, sitting in the corner. <laughs> Not long after that, it led to my breakdown that I had. You know? it was horrific. I don't even like to think about that now. Sometimes we'll sigh And sometimes we'll cry And you'll know why The worst part of all was he was down there every week down in Bogner. But I got in the car and we drove about two miles from home. He just broke down and he couldn't go. And I said, that's it, we're going home. She found me upstairs. Apparently I was rocking back and forth on the floor. Tough. And uh, Evelyn, my wife, uh, nursed me through that. It took me nearly two years to overcome it. But he didn't stay off work long enough. 
because he wanted to make himself get back in, just going back to work. Instead of taking a year off, which we couldn't afford to do then, um, somebody had to pay the bills. I knew what I had to do with the shows. There's been times when he's started to go down again, but then I've always said, no, that's it, we're going back up again, not down, and we just got on. But I've always been there for him. Yes, I'm afraid I look after him well. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for this? Will you please welcome on stage Ricky Valance? Who's rushing where angels feed a dread? And so I come to you, my love, my heart above my head. Though I have seen the danger there If there's a chance for me Then I don't care There have been many times when I thought about giving up and doing something else. The only thing was I, did, I was determined that nobody was going to get me down. This was, this was what I was going to have to do with my life. So how are they to know? It's, it's so difficult to put it into words. It's, it's a feeling that comes over you. You know, it, it grasps you by the scruff of the neck. Every song you sing, you get inside the song. You express that to the audience. And you can feel the rapport coming back to you. That's my drug, if you will, for want of a better description. That's my drug. I, I, I love to, I live on that. Don't you know I need your song? Tell me please, I gotta know. But he's had a lot of ups and he's had a very lot of downs. And in fact, probably I heard more than he does. <laughs> but uh, I try and I did as best I can. But I go everywhere with him like that. Lauren and Tommy lovers if I had a pure choice, I would like to do a program without telling It's 52 years for me I've been singing the song now. Sometimes I'd like to leave it out and do something new. But because people are so close to that particular song, you know, I've had piles of letters about how they, people have named their child after, after my record. And that's very touching. But speaking as a personal artist, I just love occasionally to be able to just leave that out. But of course, I know it will never happen. So, I'm trapped. There you are. Tell Mama I may be late. I have something to do. There are days I've got to hold my hand up. There are days when I put my hand up and say, I wish this was all over. I do get fed up. The only time he will stop singing is if his voice goes. If he thought his voice was going, he wouldn't get up and make a fool of himself on stage. No way would he do that. Don't ask me what he would do if he had to give it up. I'd got no idea. <laughs> Face that when it comes. <laughs> Tell Laura I love her. Tell Laura I need her. Well, I'm more Ricky than David now. David Spencer seems like another person to me. I am as I am. Very good. Honestly. Oh, wonderful, Joey. God bless you.